All right, so what we're going to go over is how to think about paper and and how much uh, we would need to order, um, especially when you're trying to take parent size sheets and know what to run, how to run them. So for example, we're doing a job for Rita, and um, she wants us to run crowns that she's going to die cut on her side. So all we need to do is print and cut, but she has unique papers. We want to figure out how that interacts with each other. Okay. So there's a few factors you need to to think about. The first thing you want to think about is the trim size when document is open. In this case, the crown before assembly is five by twenty-four point five. Okay. You also need to think about the sheet size we're going to run. So in this case, um, a couple of sheet sizes that we like are um, that are long. The iridesc can print up to 13 by uh, 36. Okay, so that's one thing to know. So um, as so that's your limits for the iridesc. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you need to think about the parent size sheets. So in this case, we have two options. A large and a small. And you want to optimize that, right? So this is the information you need to, to, to give answers, OK? So the way that you would do it is by first going into the document and putting in those dimensions. So we have uh, 5 by 24 and a half. OK, now it doesn't really matter here, right? You're just getting the size, right? Then you go into SmartStream. And then you know that our limit on the iridesc is 13 by 36. So you can start here if you're not sure. Now it's more expensive to run 36, right? You'd have to quote that out, which would be uh, a big deal, right? You'd have to m make sure print IQ matches to how we're going to run. But you know you have a lot of space here, right, David? Mm -hmm. So we can actually cut this down to uh, 26. And you want to have at least an inch on the top and bottom. So in general, put in more space than less space, right? So this yeah. would be comfortable. You also need to make sure that you have plenty of uh, space around. So make sure you have your crop marks and a gutter, right? And now you can see that you can actually make this smaller if you need to, OK? So for example, this is optimizing the run where there's plenty of space here and here. You would also need to talk to the client how much space they need in here, right? Mm -hmm. In between, yeah. So for Rita, I mean, if you you could put a lot of extra, maybe two inches is too much. Let's put just one inch, and that still comfortably fits there, right? So if you want to make sure there's enough space, I would actually say this is more comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have that size now. So the on the iridesc, this can comfortably run at 13 by 26. Okay, so you have that note, right? Mm -hmm. So now you can press OK. And you could save this as something like, I don't know, uh, read a paper uh, run size, you know, project name, mm -hmm. right? Just so you have it and you could save it as a reference and put it into your job folder. But you know now, right, once you save it, we have 13 by 26. So now what you do is just create a new document at that sheet size. 13 by 26, yeah. Right, and then you smart stream again. So now you're focused on that second step of, okay, I know what I want to run it on. In this case, 
I'm going to try 13 by 26, and now I'm going to see what paper size I can use. All right? So you have large 28 by 44, so we could try that first. See, and now you could easily optimize, All right? So you can get three up, and you don't need as much space, right? Because this is not for printing, right? This is mm -hmm. just cutting paper down. Yeah. So I put in a gutter just so we can uh, trim it more cleanly all the way around. Mm -hmm. But you can get three up. Now, are we done? Is that the answer? No, because we need to check the other measurement. That, but you actually have to think about grain direction. Oh, right. So grain direction matters, um, especially if it's thicker. Mm -hmm. And if, if you want to have a more likely chance for it to work, which is very important in this case, you need to consider grain direction. So you would actually want to ask Rita, what's the grain direction? So I should have noted that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So what is the grain direction? It's so important. In general, the, number in the, the, the last number is the, the direction of the grain. So the grain direction according to what you took note-wise is 44, and that's typical for paper. Mm -hmm. But you're going to want to uh, confirm that with Rita. So if the grain direction is going in the 44, that means the grain's going this way, right, the 44-inch yep. side. So that means actually the sheets that we're running are short grain. Because see oh, how the... right. Cool, right? That's good. So that's good. In this case, it works out perfectly. Yeah. However, if you only had it the other way, the grain direction would have been going this way, mm -hmm. which would be bad on the iridescent because if you run long grain, if like the way the sheet's going to run is the 13 edge, right? Mm -hmm. So if the grain direction is going along the long grain, this has a much higher chance to jam in the iridescent. But if it's short it grain, be. yeah, because it's kind of going, it's bending all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. to try to get that sheet through the machine. So but if the grain direction is this it. way, it's more pliable. Mm -hmm. And that's especially important for cover stocks. For tech stocks, you actually prefer it to be long grain, um, unless you're going to Stephanie Gibbs, right? So there's a lot of mm -hmm. things about grain. But in terms of like machine runnability, if you're running a 60-pound text, you actually want that to be long grain for the same reason, because it's bending through all those different areas if it's too floppy mm -hmm. it could jam too right okay so you don't want it too stiff and you don't want it too floppy right that's good to know yeah and this is true for the indigo too mm -hmm. so yeah in this case it's a pretty easy answer mm -hmm. this is yeah, how like you'd want to run it how the other one would fit better yeah so you have that so right now we're going to take a note 28 44 is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Can get three up and it'll be short grain, assuming the 44 parent size is long, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to check that. Now we're going to check the 22 by 28. And it probably would be a good idea, by the way, what was it? taking a screenshot, you know? Oh, yeah. That'd be really smart. Mm -hmm. That way you have it. And a lot of times I put it in, like, Taz, for example. Or you could put it, you know, in the Zoho ticket. That'd be really helpful, especially for getting it to me to check. I would put it in, in uh, into the notes. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. So you could do something like this. Boom. Right. It gets kind of crazy, though, so maybe attachment would be better, but for now, that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. um, I guess I can't completely trust it, unfortunately, because I don't know the size of this without going oh, to the yeah. document size. So it's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, and I guess if I have, like, the other one that's been measured, so you can see that it was coming from a yeah. 13 by 26 in sheet, kind of follow the, the logic, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. So, for example, now you have the the 22 by 28. Mm -hmm. 
and you can see this is not going to be very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it can't even... It's rotate. not even two, right? So for this one, it's pretty... And it's long grain, mm -hmm. assuming... So it's pretty much not an option, unless... If this is short grain, it's a good option. Mm -hmm. One up, or potentially... And then it depends on the price, paper, the cost of the paper, right? So, but in general, 99% sure, assuming this is long grain, the better way to go would be 28 by 44. And you can let her know that we get three up. And let her know that we'd want, you know, at least, you know, 50 sheets extra. Okay. Um, so, yeah. 50 extra sheets and then to get that sample so we can test it out first. Yeah, to make sure the ink sticks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's how I'd approach this. So that's what I do. And you can tell I, I, I do write it out sometimes if I'm not in front of a computer. Mm -hmm. So you can see how powerful SmartStream is. It makes it pretty easy um, once you get used to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was really quick. And and I have, I'm comfortable enough with smart streaming where I could do that. Yeah, and I'll share this video uh, and, and put it on a, probably YouTube because I realize this is something that I, even Tim's not comfortable on this, super comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but for you, I feel like it is actually uh, would be very helpful. <laughs> yeah. So you can kind of see what I think about Mm -hmm. um, and I know you have these questions all the time. Um, so is there any and questions that you have around this idea? This would be a perfect time to do because I'm, I'm literally going to, this is going to be a video that we can reference for the future. Um, not any questions particularly, but yeah, def like the oversight on the grain direction, like that's, this is always the stuff that I'm trying to really like focus in on is that that next step that, Helps be a rock star. Cool. Sounds good, man. Awesome. Okay, Thanks cool. so much, but, dude. Yeah, this definitely helps me. Like now, I can explain this to to Rita and like feel like I'm coming from a place of knowledge. Exactly. Sounds good, man. Awesome. Thanks so much. Cool. Talk soon, dude. Thanks,